Boom! Breaking news. Elon Musk offering to buy Twitter for $54.20 a share. I think it's going to be, and, and the orange man probably going to be back. And I, I, Thank uh, you this very is, much. Oh, we have a protester. We have a protest. We have a pro out, out, out. Be nice. Out. Get him out of here. Get him out. You know, you really say, where do these people come from? Uh, get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. Looks like a nice little guy, actually. Go home to mommy. Go home. Bye. Go home to mommy. Go home to mommy. <laughs> What's going on everyone? Jeremy here from The Quartering and the meltdown has been going on all day and it's really been a thing of beauty to watch as news of Elon's recent unsolicited offer to purchase Twitter has sent the entire staff into an emergency all hands on deck meeting at 2 p.m. and has led to other investors at least publicly making out or making a move that uh, that uh, they're buying up more shares of uh, Twitter to prevent him from being its largest shareholder. In fact, he's no longer their largest shareholder. Well, ultimately, I still think this is a huge meme to Elon, even though it has now become a $50 million meme. I do believe that, you know, while he, you know, it's relatively safe, uh, I don't think all the people claiming that they're going to leave uh, Twitter are suddenly going to leave Twitter. I think they're all going to stay and they're going to whinge and they're going to complain. And that's exactly what we did, a lot of people, when we said we were going to quit Twitter. Now, some people did. Uh, certainly, but a lot of like prominent conservatives or right-leaning people have been threatening to leave Twitter forever and just really never left it because there's nothing quite like dunking on uh, leftist lunatics. But now you see in this new, just a quick update, Elon is no longer Twitter's largest shareholder after another buyer ups its stake in the company. While Elon is busy trying to buy Twitter, another shareholder has upped its stake in the company, knocking Musk off his perch as the company's largest shareholder. Asset manager Vanguard Group recently upped its stake in the social media platform and is now the company's largest shareholder, bumping Mr. Musk out of the top spot. Well, sure, but I mean, you know, he's just one guy and there's some sort of large conglomerate, but whatever. Um, Wall Street Journal reports the Vanguard disclosed on April 8th that it now owns 82.4 million shares of Twitter, or 10.3% of the company, according to its most recent publicly available figures from the SEC. What's going to be interesting is, uh, does, does, uh, do they agree with the buyout? Do they want to get the money now, or do they see, you know, a bigger future for Twitter? You know, I don't think Twitter has done a very, very good job of monetizing itself. And so they certainly could be looking at uh, uh, a cash out for their for their uh, many 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 investors, but also hilariously, some of the the best blue checkmark meltdowns uh, have come out of this. And I just it would be great if it went through. And I don't think something like this happens overnight. Uh, I think it would probably take weeks to kind of get this deal. So like. Now, today we have the initial flurry of information. Maybe a denial would, would come quicker. Uh, but you see here, this from Axios. The world's richest man, someone who used to be compared to Marvel's Iron Man, is increasingly behaving like a super a movie supervillain, commanding seemingly unlimited resources with which to finance his mischief-making. Okay. Apparently wanting, you know, being committed to free speech is mischief making. I suppose when you have, I mean, we even have the media too. The media's in on it with all their fear mongering and stuff. Here's Jeff Jarvis. These are all certified blue check marks. Of course, we talked about this one earlier. Today on Twitter feels like the last evening in a Berlin nightclub. Uh, so he's making references to uh, the invasion of the bad guys from WW2. Now, internet, notorious internet moron David Levitt, you know, the very same guy that uh, got, you know, dunked on by 
at all sides of Twitter back when uh, he he basically, you know, he's the guy that made Target Tory famous by having a, a mental breakdown that they wouldn't sell him an electric toothbrush for a penny, writing, if Elon Musk successfully purchases Twitter, it could result in WW3 and the destruction of our planet. A lot of these feel like bait, too. Like, the, the amount of bait out there is is strong, so be careful. Obviously, Washington Post, owned by Jeff Bezos, writing Musk's appointment to Twitter's board shows that we need regulation of social media. Um, platforms to prevent rich people from controlling our channels. Again, Washington Post, owned by uh, second richest man on the earth, uh, uh, Jeff Bezos. You have um, Pam Keith, Esquire, dear all. Please note that Tesla and Musk have their own troll farm. A very bad sign. Only a douchebag needs a troll farm. Dear Elon, F off. Your ego is way bigger than your judgment. And your money doesn't make you a decent leader of a darn thing. Yeah, I'm sure the Tesla's success and SpaceX's success has nothing to do with him. Um, you run a racist company and I will never let my words drive your bottom line. I'll be doing all I can to convince liberals not to buy your stuff. Okay. I see you got, you've locked replies and you have, at least at this moment, 37 likes. So do you all finally appreciate that buying a Tesla is enabling the destruction of global free speech and pumping the ego of an a-hole megalomaniac who is the next DFG? Do you get that? Stop giving them your money. I don't even know what. Why don't I know what DFG stands for? Lila Sturgis, another blue check mark. I don't want to leave Twitter, but it seems a given if Musk buys it, it will become completely uninhabitable for trans people and lots of others. You know, maybe. If all you lunatics out there didn't try to take down Parler and all the other alternatives, you would have an alternative to go to right now that isn't owned by Elon Musk. But you don't. Because you make sure that the, that, you know, be for being liberals, I don't know, you know, while you're worshiping at the altar of the almighty global corporation, you're making sure that, you made absolutely sure that there was no competition allowed. Of course, uh, Space Rock's genius Brianna Wu writing, the real reason Truth Social Gab and all those other right-wing platforms have failed is smart people don't want to spend their time there. If Musk buys Twitter it dismant and dismantles everything, again, he won't. Slash two, right-wing lunatics may despise us and the standards of civility we expect, but the truth is their social media networks fail without us. Um, can you name a successful, exclusively left-wing social media platform? No, I didn't think so. Max Boot writing, I'm frightened by the impact on society and politics if Elon Musk acquires Twitter. He seems to believe that on social media, anything goes. For democracy to survive, we need more content moderation, not less. What? Literally writing, for democracy to survive, we need more censorship. That's, that's, what, that's what he said. Of course, Elon Musk does have a plan B as it was revealed in his TED talk today. The question was, well, well let's just see what he says. Let's watch his own, his own video. You can hear you know, for audio listeners, you'll be able to hear it. Okay, so, so you don't like to lose. If in this case, you are not successful in, you know, the board does not accept your offer. You said you won't go higher. Is there a plan B? There is. <laughs> I, I, think we, I think we would like to hear a little bit about Plan B. Yeah, I don't think he's going to tell you. For, for another time, I think. Another time. Obviously, his Plan B is probably either, uh, as mentioned in an earlier video today, I suppose, again, depending on when I release this, that he can outright, he can still purchase Twitter even if they refuse to buy it. Also, obviously, he could, say, buy an existing platform like Getter and make it decent or, or Gab um, and, and get it more, you know, more advertising, more, more eyeballs on it. But it, it's definitely an interesting proposition. 
This on top of Washington Post columnist frightened by the prospect of Elon Musk buying Twitter. This is via The Hill. Washington Post columnist, oh, it's Max Boot, yeah, in a column on Thursday, said that he is frightened by the idea of a billionaire, uh, billionaire Elon Musk buying and assuming control of the social media giant. I'm frightened by the impact on society and politics if Elon, Musk's, Elon Musk acquires Twitter. Well, if we learned anything like, say, in the 2016 election, for example, and through Dave Chappelle, Twitter isn't real life and it doesn't really matter. I mean, um, it, it doesn't affect what regular people talk about at the pub or at their bowling leagues or at their knitting circles or whatever it is at nor or fishing groups or whatever normal people are up to. It's part of the reason that so many on Twitter were so shocked and appalled when Hillary lost the 2016 election is because they legitimately think that, uh, uh, that, that Twitter is real life. If journalists are fright, I mean, and by the way, make no mistake about it. Like Elon Musk is hated by journalists and he hates them too. Jeff Bezos bought the Washington post just so they could write, in my opinion, smear articles about Elon Musk and, and Tesla and stuff like that. One Tesla breaks down on the side of the road and there's a thousand articles about it. Meanwhile, 50,000 domestic made vehicles, uh, break down every single day. And nobody writes articles about it. I don't care if you don't like Tesla, but at least acknowledge that like there's this weird like insanity around um, you know negative press around Tesla, and it has a lot to do with uh, you know who owns it, and that's just a fact. And if you if you deny that fact, then you're letting your hate for Elon Musk cloud your judgment. Um, and and that's what a lot of these people they think Twitter is like you know real life. And it just isn't. It's hilarious for to to like stop in and make fun of things and have fun with it, but like it can't control you. And these meltdowns have been absolutely beautiful. I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you again real soon.